Thank you, Maddie. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you, everyone. Uh, welcome. My name is Tibor Vass, as uh, Maddie mentioned. I work at Docker. I'm a maintainer of Docker and a project called BuildKit. And today I would like to t talk to you about WebAssembly uh, and how it relates to Docker. First of all, may I ask for a show of hands of who has heard of Docker before Mehdi mentioned it? All right, pretty much all the audience. And who has heard about WebAssembly? Can you also raise your hand? Okay, a, a little less, maybe half. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm, gonna quickly through, I'm gonna quickly go through both of them. So first up, what is Docker? Uh, one simple way to explain it is that it's a, uh, uh, a, a platform, software platform to build, ship, and run any app anywhere. Uh, in other words, it allows you to build safely an application with all its dependencies uh, and deploy that same thing that you just built uh, to various servers, whether it's uh, in test or in production or be it on your, same, on your, on your dev laptop. Uh, and it runs in a sandbox environment. One very important point about Docker is that it's completely language, platform, and framework agnostic. And, and that, that's key of, uh, th that's a key part. Um, now, what is WebAssembly? Oh, also shortened sometimes as WASM, and you might hear that, uh, you might hear me say WASM a lot. So, WebAssembly, for, for those of you who know what it is, it's often, um, it's often related to just faster games in the browser, or oh, now you can have Photoshop in, in your browser, uh, or also, yeah, I can finally have my uh, favorite compiled language in the browser. It's the end of JavaScript's monopoly on the web. Um, it is true, it's a little bit of all of that, but more precisely, um, one, imp one thing I don't necessarily uh, like about WebAssembly is the web a name in WebAssembly because it makes you think that it's only about the web. And I work at Docker and I'm quite interested on the server side. So um, why, why is it web in WebAssembly? The way I like to see it is it's basically, it brings the same level of security that JavaScript has today in the browser and brings that to the server side. Um, so imagine if you have the same level of, of, uh, of safety in a C program. Or, 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 or Python program or whatever it is uh, on the server, or JavaScript even, because you could run JavaScript on the server with Node, but uh, you, you don't have that sandboxed environment that you have in the browser. So now the assembly part in WebAssembly, basically one way of thinking about it is that it's a new ISA, a new instruction set architecture, just like uh, x86, ARM, uh, RISC-V, all these um, very low level architectures um, WebAssembly is another architecture. It's virtual, I, as far as I know, there's no hardware for it yet, but um, it's, uh, yeah, it's that very low level. So uh, another very interesting point here is because all the languages want to run in the browser, all of a sudden you have a, um, you have a race to the browser for all the languages and, 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 uh, uh, and, and because of that, you now start to see a low level common layer for all the languages, which is quite exciting. Imagine you could import a library written in any language into your app that's written in another language. So that's quite exciting for me. Um, one key point is that it's designed for both portability and security, and it's a standard. However, you might not like some part of WebAssembly, the best feature of WebAssembly is that it's a standard. So, um, by the way, I, I gave this talk at a was, uh, or part, uh, longer version of this talk at a WebAssembly meetup uh, that was mainly talking about WASI. Uh, and what is WASI? WASI is a slight layer above WASM. It's a WebAssembly system interface. And I, if you're interested in this, I can talk a little more in detail, but for the purpose of this talk, just think of it as a, uh, a way to do server-side WASM in a portable and secure way. Basically, it's the syscall layer, um, and it, it comes with a reference libc implementation. It allows you to do more than just, uh, uh, you know, uh, increase the entropy of the universe by just running CPU operations. So it, it maintains that WASM's promise of portability and security. It's a proper design, 
and uh, it's still early. N none of, n a lot of things are not done completely here, um, but there's a, f a first draft and it's, uh, I put a link to for those who want to contribute. So now let's look at the intersection real quick. How similar are they? Both talk about being a sandbox and a, and a porta and, and, and portable. So they actually do the same thing in quite different ways, very different ways. Uh, I, again, for questions, if you're interested, I can go into detail. Uh, the main point here is that this part is similar, and when you achieve both sandboxing and portability, that's when you go from, but it works on my machine, to build once and run anywhere. So that's a common part. Uh, little asterisk here is that the portability is not actually done the same way and there are actual differences, notable differences um, that are actually complementary, but that's again, maybe later for questions. Um, so one uh, important point here is that um, Docker is much older than, than, uh, than WebAssembly. It's crazy to think that, but it's true. And so we could, and, and it's also loved by developers. Um, according to uh, Stack Overflow, it's number three platform after Linux and Windows. So one, one obvious question here is what can, uh, what can Docker bring to WebAssembly? And uh, to answer that question, you can, bring, you can break down uh, Docker into three aspects. One is build, this, uh, second is distribution, and runtime. Uh, let me start with runtime real quick. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Docker relies on uh, uh, two components for the runtime, container D, and uh, any OCI compliant binary, in, in, in our case it's run C. That's what runs containers on Linux. And, um, and so that's basically the runtime part. WebAssembly has a lot of, uh, lot of uh, runtimes for WebAssembly that has, uh, some of them have WASI support, some of them don't. And, uh, oops, sorry, I forgot to click. So Wasm Time, Lucid is the, the main two that were announced, uh, I think, back in March. And, uh, and Wasmer is another one. And so all these are basically just runtimes that allow you to run WebAssembly apps. Uh, um, and um, the question is, what about the rest? What about build and distribution, and how, how Docker fits in, the, in this picture? So let's talk about build. So the biggest problem that a Docker build solves is the, in, is the inconsistent environment. When you run a, when you download any program, or, or sorry, when you git clone any project online, and you try to build it, and it doesn't build, Th these are the kind of errors you can get. Um, so to solve that, you want a consistent environment, which is what containers, Docker containers bring you. So it avoids the builds on my machine problem. Uh, it also, an important thing that sometimes is um, not often uh, looked upon is it builds safely without affecting your host too much. So that's cr pretty convenient. You install something and, uh, and uh, it doesn't affect, you, you build something without affecting your host too much. A Docker file, can you raise your hand? Who has written Docker files so far? Oh, okay, half of the audience. Um, it's, pre it's a pretty simple way to describe your, your build graph in a language agnostic way. Um, caching is also, um, allows you to have a much faster dev workflow and there's flexib flexibility in the Docker file, uh, uh, especially with BuildKit, which is the, the, the project uh, I'm working on these days. So. Um, this is a, an, just an example of how you, could, uh, how you could use Docker in the Wasm ecosystem. So when you want to build something with Wasi, uh, with the Wasi SDK, um, you know, you need a bunch of things and, and those things might, uh, might not be consistent across environments. So you just write a Docker file. You just write a Docker file, it, you're gonna Docker build it and that will be consistent. And you can run the compile command, uh, that's the last line, run clang. Um, that will give you basically the uh, the wasm um, the wasm uh, payload. So that and you do Docker build dot and you'll have your your Docker image. Well, the problem is it's great I have a Docker image and my wasm file is in there, but I just wanted my my wasm file, not my Docker image. That's for x86. How do I get it out? So uh, one way is to extract build artifacts uh, from it and. Uh, among those of you who have written Docker files, who has written Docker files with multi-stage? 
Okay, much less. So I'm glad I can, I can explain that. So here's how you do multi-stage. Multi-stage Docker files is when you have multiple fronts. That's how you can recognize one. So you can name your stages. In this case, the first one is called builder. And then uh, the last stage is the one that's actually being built, and all the other stages are just intermediary and they're dis discarded. So in this case, I'm doing an empty container from scratch, and I copy one specific file from the builder container, from the builder stage. So just by doing this, I will create a, a Docker container that only has what I need, and with the new dash O uh, flag on Docker build, uh, I, can, uh, I can essentially extract it into a directory. So if I do ls out, I see my, uh, my uh, wasn't payload. So the truth is, for, in order to do this, you need buildkit, and in order to uh, enable buildkit, you can do docker underscore buildkit equals one. So I told you I would talk to you about buildkit. Um, so this is all good, but what if you imagine wasm distribution through do, uh, basically Docker images? Um, one thing to realize is that Docker is already multi-platform. Today you can build for Linux, for Windows, uh, those are operating systems, but you can also build for x86 architecture or ARM. So the question is, how do I, uh, how do I create a new platform for Docker? And the answer is you basically, you basically don't. It, it, it already works. Um, so this is how you can build, for instance, for ARM64. You do your same Docker build, but dash dash platform equals Linux slash ARM64, and that will be your target platform. So if you analyze that, it has two components, there's the OS and the architecture part, and the question was, all right, what do we put in OS? Now we know it's WASI, what do we put in architecture? And that's WASM. So for a long time, that, that's, what the, that's why WASI is quite important, is because it defines the OS part of, of, the, of what an application should be. Um, so one amazing thing with Docker is that you can, do mul you can build for multiple platforms. And that is uh, possible thanks to BuildKit, and, uh, which is our next generation builder toolkit. Uh, it's integrated with Docker, as I showed you earlier. And another uh, tool, a Docker CLI plugin that allows you to extend your build capabilities, taking full advantage of, of BuildKit features. So these are the, the, the two projects if you want to check them out and uh, contribute, for instance. Um, so here's how you can do multiple platforms. You simply uh, specify the two platforms, AMD64 and ARM64 in this case, both for Linux. Oops, sorry. So here I'm using the buildx plugin. So docker buildx build is the way I build with the plugin. And I just specify multiple ones. So there's multiple ways of doing multi-platform. One is uh, like with QMU emulation, Another one is distributed native nodes, so like you have an ARM64 node or et cetera, or you can do cross-compilation. So in this talk, we're gonna talk about cross-compilation. This is Docker file to cross-compile to, to basically any, any platform. So um, the first stage has a dash dash platform flag, which pins the first stage to the st stage of the build platform, which is the, sta which is the platform where Docker runs. Um, and uh, the target platform is the platform that's specified at, uh, the, at the build CLI, at the build command, when you do build dash dash platform. And uh, basically these are environment variables for the duration of the build, and your build tools can inspect that and do things accordingly. In this case, everything was done for you with the, the tone stg slash xx colon llvm image. Um, that basically understands these environment variables and does magic to you to set up the right cross compilation tool chain with LLVM to produce a, uh, a slash hello uh, binary, whether it's for Linux AMD64, for ARM, uh, for Wuzzy Wuzzum in this case. So, and yeah, the last stage, we basically just take that final binary to keep it very uh, minimal. Um, so like I said, base images can integrate with the Argo automatically, and this is the project. Tonus Tigi is the uh, creator of BuildKit, my colleague, and he, 
he's, uh, he's doing all these great things. Um, so demo time. How am, I, how am I doing on time? All right. Whoops. All right. Is, do you see, is it big enough? All right. So here I have my Docker file. It's the ex pretty much the same thing that you saw. Um, the main difference maybe is that here I add a who am I environment variable that will be the target platform. So on Linux, AMD64, it will be Linux, AMD64, et cetera, et cetera. So, and we explained that we want to run slash hello. So let's look at the, uh, sorry, let's look at the um, hello.c file. So this is a hello world file. Um, actually, let's modify it to, just to show that this is all live. So here I modified my hello file. What it does, is it better in white or black? Let's, let's try it this way. So it will print something, and this is just to demonstrate the fact that um, you can do a bunch of syscalls and use the libc library somewhat if you, if you don't try to do networking or, or, or fork processes, or there's a bunch of things that don't yet work with WASI, but this is a demo of, of uh, basic file system operations that do work. Um, so he, an interesting thing here is that I'm going to open slash and the security promise of Wasm would want you to, would want you to think that that does not mean that you can access the root of your file system, right? It should just access the root of that container that you're running in. So uh, it's just going to print the content of what's at the root and uh, then it's going to write a file named foo at the root and then we'll print again the contents of slash just to prove that um, slash foo was written to disk. So pretty simple. And let's build it. So this is the new output of Docker build if you're using BuildKit. So see, most of the things are cached already except the last part. So it recompiles with the new content, that uh, the, the new hello world string. So here I have a, an image. I can run it, and it says, hello, API DSSF. I am a Linux AMD64, uh, which is the platform I'm on, even though right now I'm on a Mac. It runs in a Linux VM. And um, I have Docker Desktop installed, that's why. Uh, so yeah, it prints, uh, it prints my hello binary. These are Docker container-specific uh, things, and writes the slash foo, and it's in there as well. So that worked. So, Earlier I mentioned QMU, and, there, and I might even demo this now. Um, actually, no, let's not demo that now. First, let's show how you can build multiple, um, uh, for multiple platforms. So in this case, I'm going to build for Linux AMD64, Linux ARM64, and Wazi Wasm. I'm going to name this, uh, hello, Tiborvas slash hello, and I'm going to push this. So this is because I have my buildx CLI plugin installed. So what it's doing here is hopefully it's not trying to uh, redownload this image because, okay, no, good. So that's cached. Most of it was cached. Um, Except it re it, re it rebuilt for the architectures that it didn't uh, that it didn't compile yet, and you see all these uh, manifests they're, they're platform specific, and then finally it assembles the the multi uh, architecture manifest and puts it to Tiborvas slash hello. So one w way of uh, inspecting that is this way. So here I can see that Tiborvas slash hello. Uh, has this digest here, and it has the Linux AMD64 version, the Linux ARM64 version, and the Wazi Wasm version. So, um, just to prove you that this QMU emulation works, I'm going to uh, to run this one. This is the ARM64 version. So I'm specifically telling Docker to only pull the ARM64 version. 
and as as you can see, it works. And this is only because uh, there's QMU emulation setup. I can talk to you about that more later if you're interested. And that comes with Docker Desktop. So if you're if you're interested in running uh, uh, for different platforms, I highly encourage you to download Docker Desktop. Um, so all this is cool, but we, the talk is about WebAssembly. So now the question is, how can I run the WebAssembly image, right? Like. Uh, can I just do this? Will this work? And the answer is no, it won't. And it won't because the operating system is not supported. For this, my uh, colleague Tonit, Tonis, he wrote a, a another uh, Docker plugin uh, called Docker Wasm. This is completely uh, experiment, like, yeah, it's just for, a, it's just a POC, sorry. So I put it here, Docker Wasm. And this is how I can uh, essentially run with Wasm, and it was extremely fast. So this this one was built for Wasi Wasm, and you can see uh, you, you can see it work the same way. So um, how did how did it work? It basically it basically downloaded all the uh, all the, the the layers with tar, specifically uh, the Wasi Wasm parts of it, and it ex extracted on, on the host and uh, invoked uh, the, the one of the Wasm runtimes, in this case Wasmer, to, to launch the Wasm container, setting up the slash correctly, setting up the environment variables correctly, et cetera, and then, then run it through, uh, through the Wasm runtime. So the cool thing here is that here I'm on, I'm on my Mac. There's no, there's no, uh, even though there's a Linux VM, there's no, um, how to say, there's no hypervisor running, really. It's, it's uh, just a Wasm runtime uh, right off on the Mac. And so now you have a truly, uh, you know, you could run this Wasm runtime on uh, Windows, on Mac, on Linux, et cetera, anywhere. So that's pretty powerful. And I'm wondering if, uh, so yeah, a quick recap here. So yeah, we built an, an image for all the three platforms here, x86, AMD 64, uh, sorry, ARM 64 and, uh, and Wasm. We pushed the registry and read it on, on uh, multiple platforms. Uh, and the key point here is that we did not change anything in Docker uh, to, to, to support this build capability. Nothing changed in, uh, in Docker build and build kit. All of this worked. Uh, out of the box, um, yeah. So you can you can basically build push uh, wh whatever images, even was it wasn't images today with the Docker infrastructure with Docker registries. Uh, so that's the distribution part. And like I said, no changes were required. So this is another project that I didn't have time to demo. Uh, it's basically the same thing you saw with the Docker Wasm run, but only with uh, only on, on on Linux with Container D. So um, um, if you want to check it out, it's, uh, it's my other colleague, Derek, who wrote it. And uh, this is the Wasm CLI plugin that, that you saw demo. Um, it's completely unprivileged. There's, uh, like I said, there, I, I'm my own user on my Mac, and it just works. So that's, that's pretty cool. And these will be my, uh, this will be my final slide. Additional links. So I put up buildx, uh, buildkit links. Uh, I also gave a talk, and there's a blog post about Dockerfile best practices if you're interested. Um, um, th that's uh, yeah. Sorry, Docker Wasm is the is like I said the Wasm CLI plugin container D, and I forgot to say, but we're hiring. So if you're interested, please uh, come talk to me. If you want to contribute, come to the Docker community Slack or on GitHub. Follow us on Twitter. And thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Nice. We have time for a few questions from the audience, right? Who are already knowing WebAssembly before? Yeah, some people. Any questions? What? There's one over there. Uh, so what is the typical um, um, area you we can apply this WASM and Docker technology. Right. 
So the, today, the Wasm applications are, uh, so first of all, I have to say, Wasm and Wasi are extremely new. So it's uh, very experimental. Wasm is, has been MVP, uh, like the first version has been around, but Wasi has just been out in March and it's like continuously improving. But overall, the, the, asp the, the, the main use case is, um, is uh, either IoT, if you really want to uh, control um, the, the footprint of, of how big your image is, how fast it is. Uh, like the boot up is extremely quick. Um, I, I didn't go into the details of how the ISA works, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a stack machine and it's extremely close to real native ISAs, but it's virtual. So um, yes, a lot of CDNs today are very interested in WebAssembly because it allows you to, uh, to run code very fast, like boot up extremely fast uh, on and close to the data. So I would say IoT and CDNs are the main two use cases today, but I think over time, uh, use cases might, might um, yeah, might uh, increase, yeah. Yeah, so we have time for, yeah, one of the, one of two other questions behind your slides. Uh, actually, uh, when you said uh, run, um, Photoshop in the browser, I got excited <laughs> about that, actually. <laughs> How far we are from that, you think? We're far. <laughs> um, I mean, how to say. So every now and then you see amazing demos uh, on Hacker News or elsewhere on how they ported this game, that game to the browser, uh, and most of the time those are not with Wazi, those are with Mscripten, which, is, which was an earlier uh, de facto way of porting uh, C code that is linked to libc uh, to the browser. And so that, that's kind of hacky, it kind of works, but uh, the, the main way we want uh, applications to be standard, right, and that's with WASI, and WASI today only has uh, a couple of syscalls, and uh, I don't think it has, uh, like the process model needs to, needs to change, uh, it needs to be there at all. Uh, and uh, what else? Um, yeah, networking is completely missing. There's a bunch of things like that. And then Wasm itself, the runtime, does not have, or I think there's a new multi-threaded uh, multi um, proposal for, mul for threads in, uh, in WebAssembly, but today it's like, it's just one thread. So uh, yeah, it's, it's still a couple of years, but over time there's more and more experiments and, and you see more of these uh, wow effects. Um, you, will you be able to see the, uh, um, the instruction with the data? Uh, I, I was basically wondering how much it can be do at the debugging. Um, uh, I'm sorry, which instructions? Uh, the machine instruction. Because this is a very close to, you can do cross platform, so that's very right. close. So to are you, are platform. you, are you asking about the web assembly instructions themselves? Um, or the Docker file or, or what? No, 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 the machine, the instruction. Instruction machine instructions. Was that hat. Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, at the web assembly level or the native code? Native code. Uh, yeah, it is possible. Uh, like, right, I, I won't be able to, will I be able to? Uh, anyway, the, the hello binary that I have right now is, is a WASM binary with a WASM format. So I could, I think there's a WASM, uh, uh, there's a binary to, to uh, print it in a human friendly way and that way you will see the instructions that, um, that uh, the LLVM compiler created to WASM. But then the question is, what does the runtime create? Yeah, the, uh, that all, the yeah. all part, yes. So I, I wouldn't be able to do it right now, but later if you want, we can, we can investigate. Uh, but basically the instructions are as close as possible to, to native, and over time, the, uh, the optimizations of these runtimes will just increase and they're, they're pretty, pro roughly speaking, think of it as less than, uh, less than twice uh, uh, slow as native because of, the, because of the, all the checks and the, and the safety of aspect. But it's pretty, it's pretty close to, to uh, it's a little under two, two X slower. Yeah, uh, another question is since you are, has a, a support multiple platform, uh, even in one platform on a system, do you specify the uh, like 32-bit uh, or 64-bit or runtime how the optimization 
what work that would affect my data, the, 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 the architecture that I want. Right, so uh, I, I was building for multiple platforms. In the case of AMD64, it's 64. For ARM64, it's also 64. I could have built for Linux slash ARM, which is 32 bits. Mm -hmm. And in the case of Wasm, Wasm, the MVP is 32 bits. And there are, there are like side conversations about how to do 64 bits. Uh, and I actually looked at the Wasm spec and I was pretty surprised how, how well they, it was thought for, for uh, not hard coding 32 bits too much. So I think the spec needs maybe two lines of changes, uh, roughly speaking, uh, for, um, for 64 bit support. But today, everything that you will, you will see with WebAssembly is 32 bits. Uh, and even the LLVM compiler has like bits of code with 64 bit Wasm, but it's completely not uh, ready. Uh, I actually am quite interested in having 64-bit uh, Wasm. Yeah. Just one more oh. question. Is there the, what was the, uh, what have you changed to make the boot up really quick? Uh, you, when, when, I, when you run the Wasm runtime? So now you're going into a lot of low details that I'm not aware of. Like, I did not write the runtime at all. I just used the Wasmer off the shelf. So if you're interested in all those, I would suggest you check out uh, the Wasm runtimes. There's Wasm time, there's Lucid, and there's uh, uh, Wasmer. Um, the, the, long story, uh, the long story short is that um, you just have to do so little things to set up. It's, uh, it's, a, it's extremely... It's extremely, the overhead is so small that there's very little to set up. You, you basically allocate a couple pages of memory. I think it's per page that you allocate, it's all there. And also my example was quite, quite uh, small, but even with a bigger example, it starts up very quickly. Yeah, thank you, Tibor. Thank yeah. you for the glimpse into the future, right? Thank you. Thanks, thank you.